Hey guys, who here came for some full coverage makeup? It's all happening in this video. This is going to be unlike anything I've ever done because I am actually trying on every single foundation that I'm discussing in this video so I can give you the best description of what's going on and why even talk about six. Well, they are all checking the boxes as being a foundation that can create what I think of as concealer optional skin. It really just 100% evens out the face. Now there are qualities about each that make each one just a little bit different from the next. You know, they're not all doing identical things. There are some things that I think you should know that will help you choose between these and figure out what's right for you. But I'm not doing this video saying everyone needs to be using a full coverage foundation because not everybody does. Not everybody A, needs it or B, wants it. I could probably do this video all over again talking about my favorite luminous foundations or lightweight foundations, but I know how it feels to have something on your face that you really would like to cover up and you're just trying to lay your hands on the best thing to take care of it. And I know because I've lived the frustration of going through so many different foundations that market themselves as full coverage, like full coverage is in the name of the product, but then they aren't. Timing wise, what made me want to do this now is because I've noticed um, some melasma kind of peeking through on my cheeks. Maybe you've seen some in videos where I've done like full face applications and you've seen just a little bit of like, um, it almost looks like a sunspot. Really pronounced freckles, but it's more of like a patch kind of happening right up in here. And that started coming upon me when I was pregnant with Belle and then every summer since, regardless of whether I was pregnant or not, it just kept kind of coming in. I have to use really good sunscreen, but even still I can get some melasma coming through. And no, I'm not pregnant now. It's just something my skin is really prone to doing now with sun exposure. So for me, all of these foundations tackle that issue. Anything else I need to cover before I get started? here. Um, I've got six foundations. One of them is drugstore. I'm sorry to say there's just not a ton of drugstore foundations that fall into this category right now. There are some that are close. There are definitely some great foundations out there from the drugstore, don't get me wrong, but for this full coverage concealer optional skin, there's one. Also application wise, you're going to see me applying these with different brushes. I do find that a brush is the best way to maintain a foundation's coverage. You could certainly use sponges with these and you Using a sponge can even create a more like natural finish on the skin, although it can sometimes take away a little bit of your coverage from the foundation. If you really want to use sponges with these, go for it, but you might find yourself having to build up the product a bit in your areas where you need the absolute maximum coverage. You know what I'm saying? You might need to add in a little bit more. You could bounce over it with your sponge because the sponge does take a little product away and the moisture in the sponge can just ever so slightly dilute things. But for my problem areas, as you watch the demos, you might pick up on the fact that if I'm using a buffing type brush, I'm going to do like a dabbing motion over the areas where I really need that fullest coverage. And that's going to kind of press the foundation into the skin, not just sweep it across and give me like a sheared out coverage, but it's really going to pack it in where I need it most. So that's a technique that across the board with all of these products works really well for maintaining coverage in those certain areas. And then there might be other parts of your face, like maybe the lower cheek or wherever it might be, where you can go with a little less. And then I'll just kind of buff, buff, buff in circular motions. There's no one special brush that you have to have to make any of these work. That's why I kind of switched it up with each one so you wouldn't feel like like, oh, I've got to have the foundation, then I have to have that certain brush. I'm not using any special primer underneath these. The only thing that's going on my skin before each application is some of this Clinique Moisture Surge Intense, just because I really don't want my skin to dry out too much um, with all of these foundation on and off situations. But also, I do think a good moisturizer underneath so many of these matte finish products will help you out a lot, and it will help you feel less dry. I'm pretty much normal skin type and I feel like I benefit from something like this under these foundations so much. Okay, let's jump in. First one I'm going to talk about is probably the first foundation that I ever discovered that's really truly in this category and it's the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover. And I did use this in a video where I was covering my melasma and I wear this in the shade Creamy Tan and it does have Bronze Spectrum SPF 15. Absolutely erase your flaws full coverage this one is. Does everybody need this level of coverage? No, but if this is what you're looking for, I mean it's really really good. The texture of it is kind of unique 
unique in that it feels sort of dry. Maybe some might describe the texture as on the verge of being mousse-like um, because there's just a little dryness to it. It's not like your standard traditional liquid foundation. And what I do find with this is while the coverage is so, so satisfying, I mean, it really is full, you have to work kind of quickly because it sets in on the skin very fast to the point where if you're not super confident with your foundation blending abilities, I might only put product on a part of the skin, work on blending that out, then put some on the next part of your skin. Because I felt like in my demo here, I was really like bouncing around just to try to keep the product moving. Even before I fully blended out one cheek, I was like trying to move on just so things wouldn't start setting in on the other cheek. You know what I'm saying? So I think you really do have to watch yourself on that application and be quick with it. But it's very matte and it's very full coverage and I wouldn't highly recommend this to someone who has very dry skin because there is that like I said element of dryness to the texture of this foundation already so if you're dealing with dry patches I think this is only going to exaggerate it but once you're done putting it on I gotta say it requires no additional concealer now in reality I'm probably going to use some sort of concealer type product or maybe even just a brightener product up in this area because I like to create contrast I don't really want just the complete flatness, but I'm not using that concealer to achieve more coverage on my skin is my point there. I might use some just to kind of give my, my cheekbone area a little bit of a boost or whatever, but I'm not feeling pressured to pull for the concealer to compensate for what the foundation didn't get done. Next foundation is one that I discovered, I don't know, maybe a year or two after the uh, Estee Lauder, and it's the Urban Decay All Nighter, which I wear in shade 4.5. This foundation does have a pump and I'll use use one full pump of it. What I love about this foundation so much is that it achieves the Estee Lauder-like coverage, but it's in a more natural, foundation-y texture. It's a little more liquidy, and I don't feel like I have to work with it quite as fast. Granted, you're not going to want to take forever on your application here, but for those who are used to working with just a typical liquid foundation, that's kind of what this is. It's a little bit more on the thick side of a typical liquid, and I really adore the coverage of this. I think it does come off on the skin looking a bit more natural than the Estee Lauder. One thing that I know I've heard people complain about with this foundation is the fact that it can oxidize on your skin, and I haven't experienced that much. Maybe a little bit, but I think a factor in that is what's the thickness of product you're using on the skin? Are you trying to get by with the minimum, like just one pump, or are you laying it on a lot? I tend to feel like that's one way you can help any sort of oxidizing situation is to really not go too, too thick with the application of product. And then you really might not notice it so much, but I love this. It doesn't take a lot of product to get that great coverage. And another kind of high point for pretty much all of these foundations across the board is staying power. They're great coverage and they also hang on the skin really, really well. Both of these are just so hardcore where that's concerned. Now the next one I'm going to talk about, and this is the one I've most recently discovered, and I just have a little sample of it right here. Um, I did get a PR box that had every single shade. There are 50 shades in this foundation from Jouer. It's called the Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation, and I have it in the shade Cameo. I've already gone ahead and placed my order for the full size of Cameo. This is an outstanding standing foundation. Um, what really sets this apart, it's giving me that fantastic full coverage of the last two, but it's the thinnest full coverage foundation I've ever encountered. I'm surprised they refer to it as like a cream foundation because the instant thing that pops into my mind when I hear cream in relation to a foundation is thickness. And it truly manages to be quite thin. It's very easily blendable across the skin. And I kind of come away feeling like while the other two are insanely matte, this one is a little step away from that. I wouldn't even call it natural on skin because it's still matte, still matte foundation. But like, as I turn my head when I've got this on, I can just see a bit more dimension happening, but yet I've still got all the coverage. So the Jouer I was very, very impressed with. I didn't notice it changing colors on my skin. It looks super fresh on my skin all day, and I'm referencing this from a overall normal skin type. When I had that Florida trip and the sunburn and everything, like that messed with my skin a little bit and kind of over dried me for a period of time. Even on my face where I didn't burn, I just felt extra dry for a while. Now things are pretty much getting back to normal where my skin type is. I might get just a little oil around the t-zone but overall I'm just pretty normal. Now we're gonna move into a foundation that is kind of a different 
consistency compared to everything else, but it's a really great product. It's even Steven from The Balm, and it comes in a pretty small jar. I remember when I got this, I thought, whoa, are they really like skimping on what they should be giving me here, but a little bit goes a long way with this. They call it Whipped Foundation. I wear it in the shade Light Medium. I am shocked that they're not promoting this more as such a one and done, just complete coverage foundation. It's so good. If you're familiar with like Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse, that's kind of a dry whipped texture. I do like that foundation, but it's something that definitely requires kind of working in and melting down into the skin. This this is kind of like a lightweight cream is what this feels like. You can spread it across the skin, blend it in with the beauty blender if you want, of course. You can use a dense brush. Any method works for it because again, it's not like a dry mousse. It is a lightweight, full coverage cream. And the downfall with this might be shade selection. I don't recall there being many shades to choose from. It's a very matte finish on the skin, but it really does kind of cover everything, I gotta say. It's kind of strange when you look at it in this format and you think, well, what's the equivalent to that like from these foundations that come in tubes and bottles. And I would say thickness wise, it's probably somewhere between the Estee Lauder and the Urban Decay. It doesn't feel quite as sanitary when you're dipping in with your finger. You could of course use a spatula or something, but it's a little bit nicer when you have total control over the amount you're using with a pump or at least a squeeze tube where you can kind of get used to consistency with your application and knowing, okay, this is about how much I need for a full coverage face to get everywhere on my skin. So the packaging is a little bit of a con with this, but the product itself is really quite good, and I've also had great staying power with it, just like the other three. Okay, two more to go. The next one is one that's kind of rediscovered for me in my collection, and it's from Laura Geller, and it's called Cover Lock Cream Foundation. Now, I have this in the shade Light, and as you'll see once I roll the demo, it's a little bit uh, peachy on me, but yet once it blends in, I feel like the skin looks absolutely gorgeous. And this is a completely full coverage foundation that's not quite as matte as any of the other ones I'm talking about. If your skin is the driest of the dry, this would be the one I'd steer you in the direction of because it's got more moisture, a more emollient texture than anything else. And it shows once you've got it blended in on your skin, it's just got a little different look to it that's not quite so flat. And it has nothing to do with luminosity in the formula or shimmer or anything in there. It's just the texture of the product. It's really, really creamy and it's just got some moisture in there, but it's very full coverage. A sponge is great with this product, but a brush really maintains that coverage the best, like I've said. Of any of the foundations, this would be the one that I feel the need to set the most. And even just being normal skin, um, I can still get a little oily around the T-zone, and I definitely benefit from putting some powder on top of this. It doesn't have to be a ton, but I just feel a little more comfortable taking control of, you know, that finish of the product on my skin and making it not quite so dewy. But I'm happy to be talking about this because I think, you know, dry skin needs an option for coverage as well. But Laura Geller did a great, great job with this foundation and I hope it never goes away. Now, the last foundation that I wanna talk about is the drugstore option that is truly, truly full coverage. And yes, I've tried, I mean, if you've heard me talk about a foundation in the past, it's gone into consideration for this video. The Milani Conceal and Perfect, that's a good one, but it's not as full coverage as this for me. It's the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. Today, I'm wearing it in warm nude. That's the one that I've had on my skin throughout this whole video part where I've been talking. It does have a pump. I've gone to a lighter shade in this for a little while, and now that I've got a little more color in my skin, Warm Nude is actually working for me. But wow, this is a really impressive foundation. I remember when the first go-round of Superstay came out and I was still living in the apartment. <laughs> um, so we're talking within the first couple of years of my channel was when Superstay first launched, and I compared it a lot with Revlon Color Stay. But in that time, while those were good foundations, they are not the level of coverage that I'm talking about here. Now, I feel like they've really made an improvement. They have stepped this product up so much and the coverage is fantastic. It feels like you're putting on just a regular liquid foundation. In terms of thickness, I feel like the Jouer is still a little thinner than this, but still, I mean, it's a kind of a close call, honestly, between that and Superstay. I have no trouble blending this in. It's gonna be matte on the skin. What I love to do, really, when I've got one of these full coverage matte foundations 
foundations on is then make sure I use some highlight that gives my skin that glow back. Use a little setting spray. There are so many things you can do to sort of work backwards a bit and okay now I've got the coverage on my skin but I want it to look all glowy and nice. There are plenty of ways you can freshen it up but I love this product. I use very minimal powder with this product. I would say I make a point to set my t-zone and I don't really bother going elsewhere on the skin because it just doesn't need it. If you can find your shade in this, if you feel like this works well with your skin and doesn't cause you to break out or whatever, this is a really great option for full coverage. It can hang with these other products that I'm talking about. I feel like I have fantastic staying power with it. And even having melasma to cover up, having, you know, pimples and redness and stuff here and there, I feel like I'm not screaming for a concealer after I put this on. And that's really cool. So those, my friends, are my six foundations that I own that I feel give me concealer optional skin. There's one more thing that I'm going to throw out here that I do think is really good coverage, but I don't have it in the proper shade to really prove to myself that it's the best full coverage foundation so far because it's this um, Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Enhancer. I have it in SX05 and I feel like I can only get away with using this color um, as sort of like a an under eye concealer, which I like it there, but it's pretty light when I try to use that all over my skin. So I feel like I might need a shade darker to truly test that all over my face. But this is really a potent little product and I'm sensing when I use it on the under eye, like I understand why people like this stuff so much. But you know what I've said about when you're trying to camouflage things on your skin and you go too light, you can really just be working against yourself because the lightness only lightens the discoloration. It doesn't really camouflage it. So it's important to to really have your right shade in everything that I've been talking about here and really match up with your skin tone well and don't go too light, don't overcorrect, so to speak, because it won't do you any favors and it will take away the true effect that all of these foundations can have coverage-wise. As always, I would love to hear your input in the comments section. What foundations have you tried that I've talked about here? Do you have any others to offer into the conversation? Let me know and thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!